Good afternoon. I am here with our Bible reading. Isn't today such a beautiful day out? Cut the window open and the sun's just shining and the air feels so nice and warm. I don't know what the temperature is, but it feels nice and warm coming in. I've even got the fan on. We're going to begin, of course, where we left off yesterday with Mark chapter 14, verses 23 through, yeah, verses 22 through 52. Can't talk today. Getting tongue-tied already. Not a good sign, guys. We are going to um, see how Jesus predicts Peter's denial. And we're going to see where Jesus is in his last place, praying to his father before he gets arrested in Gethsemane, the Garden of Gethsemane. And then we'll see Jesus getting arrested today. So let's go ahead and begin. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the cup of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, Even if all fall away, I will not. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, Today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. Now they're in Gethsemane. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him. And he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. Can you imagine what Jesus would have been feeling at that time? Because he knows what's ahead of him. My soul was overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Even though Jesus wanted the cup to be taken from him, if, if God willed it, he told his father, your will be done no matter what. If he had to go through it, then he would go through it. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Sure is. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. 
With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me, but the scripture must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man, wearing nothing but a linen garment, was following Jesus when they seized him. He fled naked, leaving his garment behind. And that's where we'll stop with Mark for today. It didn't say it in the New International Version that we're reading now, but in the King James Version, it says how Jesus, you know, how the guy's ear was cut off. I think it was Peter that cut it off. Um, Jesus told them to stop. He didn't want them fighting. And he put his hand on the guy's ear, and his ear was healed. Jesus healed his ear. I notice it didn't mention it here. Some of the translations are a little bit you know, different. So we're going to read Psalm 52 today. For the director of music, a mascal of David, when Doeg the Edomite had gone to Saul and told him, David has gone to the house of Ahimelech. Why do you boast of evil, my mighty hero? Why do you boast all day long? You who are a disgrace in the eyes of God. You who practice deceit. Your tongue plots destruction. Is it like a sharpened razor? You love evil rather than good. Falsehood rather than speaking the truth. You love every harmful word. You deceitful tongue. Surely God will bring you down to everlasting ruin. He will snatch you up and pluck you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear. They will laugh at you, saying, Here now is the man who did not make God his stronghold, but trusted in his great wealth and grew strong by destroying others. But I am like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. For what you have done, I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people, and I will hope in your name, for your name is good. And that was Psalm 52. Lastly for today, we'll read Proverbs chapter 11, verses 1 through verse 3. 11.1 1. The Lord detests dishonest scales, but accurate rate weights finds favor with him. The Lord detests honest scales, but accurate weights find favor with him. Now 11.2 When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Now 11.3 The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. And that was our Proverbs reading. Okay, guys, that was today's Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. 
I hope you guys are enjoying this beautiful day, and I hope this, you're having a great start to your week. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.